Hello and welcome to the Sim to Circuits track guide of VIR North for the MX5 Cup. Drop a comment below if you have any questions or want me to analyze any of your laps. Don't forget to like and subscribe if these tutorials are helpful. All right, so this is VIR North. I think this is a great track, a little bit of a tricky circuit. Um, hopefully this track guide is helpful for you. So let's back up. Let's jump into turn one. So one of the best references for turn one, I think, is to break a little bit past the two or a little bit before, sort of at the one and a half. That's where I like to break. There's a couple major things that I really like to focus on through this corner. Um, obviously, the braking zone is very important to hit. If you blow that and, and break a bit too late, um, you sort of hit the ABS and miss the apex a lot through that corner. I think one of the most important things here is the downshift very early to ask for a lot of rotation through turn one. So you keep the car very tight and cut as much distance as possible. So let's take a look at that. Going into this, you can see right about here, just before the one, now I'm at 87% brake. I'm braking pretty heavy, and this bleeds off into a, an aggressive trail brake. But you can see, I keep the car very tight, and I'm using a lot of this curb on the inside. So that's one of the most important things I would say is to keep the car tight on this curb. And now as I get back on throttle, I like to listen to the sound of the tires. So one trick that I highly recommend, um, edit your sound settings in iRacing, uh, turn the tire noise up and turn everything else down a little bit. So that actually lets you listen to what the car and the tires are actually doing, connecting to the road. Um, because it's one of the things that in a real car you might be able to feel it, but on a sim you, you're lacking a lot of things. So audio cues can help a lot. So you can see I'm very tight through this, this corner here. And the biggest issue that I see a lot of people make is they start to get a lot of oversteer and understeer through this. And what you want to do is you want to have as clean of an exit as possible, not scrubbing too much on the fronts, not sliding too much on the rears by stabbing the throttle to 100% right away, cutting distance and minimizing a lot of wheel spin on the exit is super important here. Now going into turn two in NASCAR, I think this is probably the area where a lot of people who are struggling with this track make the biggest mistake. So let's let it run through. And now I wanna rewind here and take a look at a few things. So let's look at the chopper cam. Now you can see there's a rubbered in line on the road all through here. Going through turn two, I recommend you set the car up on the right of that line. That helps you open up the corner. So a lot of people are looking at this inside curb here as an apex, but going from turn two to turn three, it's extremely short. You're not gaining any time by hitting this apex. So what you wanna do is you wanna focus on the apex from NASCAR turn three to turn four because that's a longer straight. Um, so take a look at this. We want to be driving. Keep the car on the right of this line. A lot of people are going to be over here wandering over, but the problem is then your car is pointing over to the snack shack or the pit lane over there. You don't want to be pointing in this direction. You want your car to point into the corner that you want to turn in. So looking at where I'm setting up the car, I'm focused on turning the car left as early as possible because that's the direction we want to go. Now, if you're all the way over on this curb, you're pointing to the right at this wall. You don't want to look there. So right here, this is my braking reference and you can see how far over to the right my car actually is. And you see this repaved section here this is your braking mark. So going into this corner, right after you hit that, that's when I start to initiate my brake. And as I start to brake, personally, I like the downshift. It asks for a lot of rotation in the car. You can see I pretty much almost spin going through this corner. And one of the things that I think is super interesting as well, looking at the rear chase, um, you can use all of the all of the curb here. So I'm pretty much in the grass using all that curb. This is not a one X. So you can tackle this curb very hard. That's something super helpful. Now I do want to say, as you see when, when the downshift happens, I'm asking for a lot of rotation out of the car. So right here, the car is just about spinning. So one thing that I will say on the first and second lap of a race, that's where you'll spin the car. If you downshift aggressively while trail braking through that corner, the car is going to want to spin. So I highly recommend on cold tires, you take that more cautious, push your downshift a little bit later into the corner and you brake a little bit earlier. 
it's it's one of the easiest places to spin and it's going to be a very easy place for people to tangle and get into wrecks in the race so just be conscious of that be cautious now the other thing through nascar you want to use all of the runoff on the side here so let's start that from the beginning and clear the telemetry here so I'm going into the corner i'm staying to the right of the rubbered line and now we hit this, I hit my brake, I do my downshift, I'm asking for a lot of rotation, I'm turning actively to the right to catch this counter steer, to catch the oversteer rather, and now the car's really starting to spin now, and I'm, I'm looking at the curb, I tackle the curb, I'm back on throttle, and I'm using all of the road on exit here. So this is what you want to do consistently. You want to run over that curb, right up to the grass, touch the grass without going into it, and then as the runoff meets back in with the track, you should as well. Okay, now that we've talked about NASCAR, this is going into left hook through snake. So this series of corners, there's a lot to talk about. So I think one of the best things right now, you can see I'm actually using third gear um, with a really good run out of NASCAR. It does make sense to use third gear here. In a race, I might recommend using second gear uh, for a few reasons. One, it's going to help you not blow your braking zone. And two, if you're in traffic following someone, it's going to make sure that you don't miss your braking marker and rear end somebody. So it might just be a little bit safer to hit the limiter in second. It's barely any slower. It gives you a really perfect reference point for when you need to brake and when you need to get your turn initiated. Um, this left curb here, you can use all of the curbs. So I want to look at the rear chase using this curb because I am using pretty much all of the curb and the grass and this did not count as a 1x on this lap. So you can use all of this curb and this was at first when I ran VIR the biggest place where I was losing time to the top guys in split one was my lack of using the curbs. I was very cautious, didn't want to get 1x's, didn't want to get slow down penalties and for whatever reason VIR is super lenient on curb usage so just be aware of that. You're going to want to use a lot of curb because this is going to help you set yourself up to use as much of the road on the left as possible and it's going to help you get back on throttle sooner so you can be flat all the way from this next corner up down to uphill so here i'm a bit progressive so you can see i didn't just stomp right back into the gas i wanted to get the car back to the left as much as i can because as soon as i go through this corner i want to be flat so here i do tackle this inside curb a little bit um, on a lot of laps, I do avoid that, and during a race, as the tires start to get warmer, um, and I want to be consistent rather than going for an absolute 100% kill lap, a lot of times I'll avoid hitting that curb so I don't bounce awkwardly and then wash off to the left. Now, it's also very important to utilize all of the track as best of your ability on the left here. So you can see I let the car walk out to the left more. One of the biggest mistakes I see is people setting their car up very far over on the right here, which makes this super tight. Then they have to use too much of this curb, they bounce, and they have to lift. So right now, the goal is to be 100% flat and listen to your tires, minimize the scrub on the tires through this series of corners, and this will allow you to carry as much speed exiting this down to uphill as possible. So looking at the rear chase, I use as much of this road as I realistically can. There's a tiny bit more that I could have used, but one thing to keep in mind, you can see this curb actually falls off and cambers off. If you end up touching that, what happens is it sucks you down that curb off into the grass, you get your off track, you lose a lot of time. So that's why it can be a little bit tough to actually use the white curbing. You want to get as close to it as possible, as consistently as you can. Um, and again, taking a look at this from the chopper cam, you can see where my car is. It's pointed very much to the right. It's using most of the track here. And it's allowing me to stay flat with out having to compromise my line through this corner. So I don't want to use a huge amount of this inside curb and I don't want to use a huge amount of this exit curb for a couple of reasons. So right now you can see I'm at 80 miles an hour which is the top of second gear. And when you hit this curb, 
at the top of the gear, sometimes if you get too much bounce, you'll get wheel spin when the tire leaves the ground, you'll hit the limiter, and you'll lose several hundredths on exit. So minimizing jumping these curbs by having a proper line through the last corner is ideal. So again, looking at that, tackle this curb as much as you can, get over to the left so you can be flat through this, use all of that road on the left, tap this curb a little bit, but make sure you don't jump it too hard. You can use this curb here on the left just to cut distance, and now it's all the way, running all the way down to uphill. Okay, so uphill, I think, is the most tricky corner on this track for a lot of reasons. One, I've raced VAR in real life a lot of times. I typically run the full version, so I don't experience the north course as much as I would going through the S's and doing the full track. Um, but I, I also think it's very tricky because it's blind. You don't see where you're going. And as the corner gets the most difficult, when you're hitting the peak apex and you're getting back on throttle, that's when the road and the hill falls off. So the big issue there is the car wants to spin right when you have to get flat. So I think this is definitely one of the more difficult corners on the track. I don't have a great braking reference. Taking a look, there's not anything that I would particularly use to say when you should brake. I, I use feel on this one. Um, so I do threshold brake. We're, we're right up at like 80, 80 ish percent. And then the interesting thing is you can see I'm at 0% brake right now. And the reason for that is we're going uphill. So the car's already trying to decelerate a lot. So I don't have to carry a huge trail brake to get rotation. So now I'm back on throttle. Now we're, we're cresting the top of this hill. And right here, you can see I'm starting to turn back left. So I'm opening this up. If we take a look at the chopper cam, you can see I'm opening up where I'm trying to drive. So right now it's all about trying to drive straight. And you can see if I go back to the cockpit cam, my wheel is maybe one degree turn to the right. So pretty much dead straight. And I'm trying to point towards those cones. The reason for that is if we go back to any of these cameras here, let's go back into the cockpit. This hill is going to fall off. So let's back up a quick second. So you see we're going uphill aggressively. Now I'm flat, but the car goes off camber on the exit of this. So you can see how much I had to catch the car on 100% throttle. That's the tricky part. It's very easy to spin here. It's also very easy to wash wide, go through the grass and get a slowdown penalty. So, so yeah, definitely be aware of how difficult that corner can be. It's, it's very tricky and having that perfect exit's great because what you're doing from here on out is flat all the way to roller coaster. So, Having a good exit there carries through this whole sequence of corners all the way to roller coaster. So that's definitely very important. Now, going into 8 through 14, there's a couple of things that I like to focus on. So number one, we have to open ourselves up, touch this grass over here. So on entry, we are pretty much running this access road for our turn-in marker. Um, that's going to allow us to use all of the curb on the left here and listen to the tires. So when I mentioned changing your sound settings, your audio settings, so you can hear the tire noises louder than everything else, this is where I would recommend doing that. And the reason for that is through this, you're trying to minimize how much you're scrubbing the front tires and how much you're scrubbing the rear tires by catching slides. So going through this, it's all about minimizing how much friction you put into the tires and carrying as much speed as possible all the way to the next braking zone. So right here, we get our turn in, we tackle this curb as much as we can, we tackle this curb, minimize that oversteer, keep it flat all the way through. Now I like to brake just as this curb starts to disappear behind the dash of the car. So you can see right now, I'm at 1% brake. I'm starting to hit the brakes right now, but I'm really focused on kind of hammering into them as this disappears. Now, going into here, I like to be very aggressive on the braking and the downshifting. I like to get a lot of rotation. I did not do this corner perfectly, and I can explain why. So on a perfect lap, you can really run over this grass and run all the way up this curb. So that was a little bit cautious on my end, um, but be aware that you can do that. Cuts a little bit of distance. It allows you to get back on throttle sooner. So you can see here, I had a really good trail break through that corner and I picked up the throttle, but I was a bit hesitant. So I probably could have 
fed back into the throttle and went back to 100% a bit sooner here. So made up a couple extra hundreds, but not a huge deal. Um, and let's go back. So we're in the braking zone. Take a look from the cockpit cam. We're braking pretty hard. I've already downshifted back the first gear. And the reason for that is I want the car to try to spin and pivot. We want that zero steer, neutral steer through the corner. You can see we're turning right but my steering wheel is pointing to the left. That's because the downshifting is doing all the turning we need in this corner. So going into this, get that rotation, go flat 100%, ride that curve on the left, use all the runoff to the right to open yourself up for hog pen. Now in hog pen, we're gonna use all of the curb on the left, and then we're gonna use a little bit of the curb on the right, but the best thing to think about, I like to use some reference speeds. Um, for starters, you're probably going to want to try to hold about 76 to 78 miles an hour minimum speed through this corner. Um, as you get quicker, 80 plus is really the best mark. Um, on perfect laps, I'm probably 82 or 83 miles an hour minimum through this, and it's very difficult to hold that. So let's take a look. We're going to hit this curb, tackle this inside curb a little bit, but most importantly, get back to 100%, wash out to this DRS board, and then we can cut through this um, cut through that pit wall board area all the way through the finish line so let's take a look back at what could have been done a little bit better so through this corner i think this entry is perfect this is also great right here looks really good we're carrying a lot of speed we're doing well we dab a little bit of brake so this is not a super aggressive brake zone this is all about balancing the car on my last track guide at asha slabin um there's a lot of utilizing the brake and the throttle to manipulate the balance of the car. And that's what you're trying to do here. You're using the brake and you're using the throttle to shift the weight around so you don't spin off or go wide. So we're using a bit of the brake. And here, my biggest problem is I turned in a little bit early. I probably should have had the car a bit off this curb because I tackle it very hard. You can get a penalty. You can get, pick up some damage here. So hitting the curb this hard where you hear that big bang on the ground as the car bottoms out, you do want to try to avoid that. This lap, uh, this sector was about 500 slow, but the rest of the lap was all purple sectors. So taking a look, this rounds out our lap at a 1 minute 35.464 with an optimal lap time of 135.348. I hope this track guide helped. Thanks for watching the video. Here's one uninterrupted lap of VIR North. Don't forget to like and subscribe if these are helpful for you. Thank you very much.